Hey all, this is the video guide, lesson guide for uh, lesson 6.4, differential equations, solving differential equations by separation. Um, I, 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 I don't have a handout, so I'm having to do this kind of screen share thing. So on the left, uh, let me zoom in here a little bit uh, so that we can see this a little better. Sorry about this, guys, um, but you know, it'll work. So on the left, I'm going to do, I'm going to have to the notes here, and then the right, I will do like the working out of the problems. So, okay, up until, let's get started. Up until now, we have only been able to solve two types of differential equations analytically, y prime equals f of x, or dy dx equals f of x, and y uh, double prime equals f of x. Okay, so uh, this is basically just saying that we've only been able to solve, you know, differential equations like this, like, you know, dy dx equals x squared, and so we could solve that, and we know that, so y uh, equals x to the third over 3 plus c, right? So that's one we can solve, right? Um, in this section, we will now solve a more general type of differential equation. The strategy we will use is rewriting the equation so that each variable occurs only on one side of the equation. This strategy is called separation of variables. It's also sometimes known as implicit integration. You'll see why in a second. But this is also, you know, same, same idea. Implicit integration. It's the same as solving by uh, separation, separating the variables. Separation. Okay, that'll do. Okay. Um, so example. Let's solve this differential equation. So I'm going to walk you through an example. Here we go. Y prime equals 2x over y. Well, the first thing you have to do when you're solving a differential equation um, is you have to, uh, let me just go full screen here, uh, you have to rewrite that derivative as dy dx. You can't have y prime. It's not like implicit differentiation where you can choose one or the other, you have to have dy dx. So the first thing we're going to do, uh, we're just going to convert that. So we're just going to rewrite that as dy dx equals 2x over y. Um, step two is is to step, oh, sorry, this is usually how it's written. You know, usually it'll be given to you like this. Uh, it's very rare that I'll give it to you in a different way. Uh, the first step is to uh, separate the variables. I would call this kind of the true step one. Step one is to separate the variables. And what that means is we're going to, in this case, multiply the left by y uh, and the right by y uh, and we're also going to multiply the left by dx and the right by dx and what that's going to do is it's going to cancel out the dx and dx and it's going to cancel out the uh, y and this y and so what we'll be left with is uh, y dy uh, equals 2x dx. So this is separate separate uh, the variables. It's the first step. Okay. Um, so it looks kind of familiar, right? This is why you can imagine it's called implicit integration because we're getting the y's with the y's and the x's with the x's. Step two is to integrate. So now uh, we're going to integrate the left and the right. So we're going to integrate y dy, and we're going to integrate 2x dx. And you're just going to integrate with respect to the variable. So there's no like funny, uh, and nothing funny going on. What's the integral of y? With respect to y, it's just uh, y squared over uh, 2, right? And the integral of 2x is going to be just x squared. Because when we divide by two, the twos will cancel, and we cannot forget here is the plus c. The plus c is key. Okay, that's also that's very very important. So step one is to separate the variables. Step two is to anti-differentiate. I know you guys would prefer that word. Step two uh, is to anti-differentiate. Differentiate. Uh, and then don't forget to add C. Um, and then the last step, the very step three, is 
get while loan. Okay. Get y alone. So in this case, to get y alone, we've got some algebra. Uh, we're going to have to multiply, do it in blue. We're going to multiply both sides by 2 here, 2 here. And um, all of this gets multiplied by 2 here. Okay. So now I have uh, y squared equals 2 x squared plus c and then the last step would be to undo a square to undo a square you take the square root that is that is a throwback from math 2 okay as a throwback from math 2 when you square root both sides like this um, that'll undo the square so you just have y equals plus minus the square root of 2x squared plus c and that is this right here is called our general solution okay. okay let me walk through the steps one more time in case you're feeling a little confused zoom out here a little bit okay so uh, first things first in if it's not written as dydx you do that but it, it, it'll it almost always is so don't really worry about that steps too much um, get separate the variables so you want the, the y's with the y and the x's with the x's so make sure they're matching and they should be multiplied by each other. So y times dy, 2x times dx, or they could be divided, multiplied or divided by each other. You'll see different examples later. Um, okay, then we got them here. They're separated nicely. Then we're going to anti-differentiate them, do the integral both sides. That's how we got y squared over 2 and then x squared. Then we add the c because you have to add c when you take the indefinite integral. Um, and then here in the blue here, we're, we are just getting y alone. So we're multiplying by 2 on both sides. We're square rooting to get rid of the square, and we end with that plus minus because when you square root a square, you can get the plus minus. That's algebra. That's called a general solution. Okay. Um, let's keep going, and before you start doing problems, let's do a couple more together, and then I'll let you know. Then you can go do your thing. Um, let me write these down. So these are different. Sorry, and these are these are different. The delta problems are different in a very big way, um, because I've shown you the general solution, but I haven't shown you the particular. So if you noticed on number one here, it says uh, given given the differential equation dy dx. Okay, so dy dx equals x minus two over y squared. And it also tells me that f of 4 is negative 3. And that's going to come about later. Okay, I'll, we'll, we'll come back to that in a bit. All right, so I can full screen this now and just solve this one. Okay, so steps are all the same. First things first, we got to multiply. And I'm just going to show you in colors to see what I'm doing. We have to make sure we get the y's with the y's. And that'll cancel with the cat. And we have to get, get to get the x's with the x's. I cannot speak, guys x's with the x's, the x over here, that will cancel with this dx here. So now I'm happy I have y squared dy equals x minus 2 dx. Very, very important. I'm going to put a little thing about this at the beginning, that you really need to be careful about showing your steps. Really be organized. Um, and be very methodical. These are long problems. They get they get really long, so you just need to take your time. Then we're going to anti-differentiate, so we'll take the integral of this. So integrate left and right, and we will get y to the third over 3 equals x squared over 2 minus 2x plus c. Uh, that's it. Okay, so that's my, it's me anti-differentiating. So we got, this is step one right here. This is step two right here. And so now this is where things start to take, start to, start to differ. So right now, if, you know, based on the other example, if I just got y alone, I'd have the general solution. This did not ask for the general solution. This asks for the particular solution. This is called the general solution because of this plus c right here. So remember, this plus c can be any constant we want. Uh, there's infinitely many of them. There's infinitely many solutions to this. Uh, many different c's that there could be. 
Um, but in this case, I don't want any C. I don't want the general. I want what's called the particular. And to get the particular, you use this knowledge that you're given. You're given that this f of 4 is negative 3, so we have to use that. So in this case, I know that f of 4 is negative 3. That's going to let me solve for C. So you can kind of you can choose when you want to solve for C. Um, I'm going to do it the way delta does it, so it's like not to confuse you, make like, keep it really simple. Um, delta solves for C at this point. So right now, this would be like step three. Um, uh, let me sort of recap here. So again, this is separate variables. Uh, this is anti-differentiate, anti-derivative. And then three is going to be uh, find C. Um, so when we find C, I'm, I know that my Y is negative three. So I'm getting this from here. My Y is negative three. My uh, X is four. So let's plug it in. We're going to have negative three to the third over three equals uh, four squared over two minus two times four plus C. That is negative 27 over 3. That is just negative 9 equals, that's 8 minus 8 plus C. OK, so negative 9 equals C. I found C. OK, I got C. So now I have C. I'm happy. Now we're going to go to our last step, which is uh, get Y alone. So we're going to go back to this equation here. Okay, and I'm going to just replace that C with what I found C to be, which is negative 9. So I'm going to rewrite that again. I might run out of space here. I'm going to have to rewrite it. But we're going to get y to the third over 3 equals x squared over 2 minus 2x minus 9. And we're just going to get uh, the y alone here. So we're going to multiply everything by 3 on the left and the right but to get that 3. This is a lot of algebra today, guys. So this all gets multiplied by 3 because I want to cancel out this 3 right here. Everything gets multiplied by 3. Um, so then I have y cubed equals... Um, I'll go ahead and distribute that. So, so it'll be x squared... Sorry, 3x squared over 2 minus 6x minus 27. And then the last step would be to cube root Right to undo the third root, you got to cube root it. So you're going to cube root both sides. So your final answer would be y equals the cube root of 3x squared over 2 minus 6x minus 27. Done. Okay. One thing to note uh, is you know how this one here was a plus minus on the first one. I have to do a plus minus. And I, hopefully the next problem this comes up. Um, if it's a cube root, you don't have to worry about any kind of plus minus thing. It's only with the even roots, like a two, a four, a six, like those ha those are going to have a plus minus involved, um, but not odd roots. So three, you wouldn't have to worry about that. Um, and I'll and I'll talk about that more in the next problem. So let's do one more. So you know, at this point, if you're following along the video. Um, now would be a good t yeah it is going to be relevant this problem now would be a good time for you to practice so why don't you try this one you know look at my video follow steps look at your notes um, and then if you get stuck you can just follow my video but at this point really just try this one by yourself okay all right let's do it I assume you've tried it by now okay so same stuff here full screen okay no it's dy dx dy dx equals negative 2x over y, and I know that f of 3 is 4. Okay. Cool. Um, let's go back to full screen here. Um, okay. So again, same steps. Uh, we are going to get get those variables together. So we're going to multiply by dx here to cancel that out, and we're going to multiply by dx here uh, so that the x's are together, and then I'll multiply by y. Let's cancel that, and then it'll be a y here. Okay. So what's left over is y dy equals negative 2x dx. We're going to integrate. We're going to integrate. We're going to take the antiderivative. Again, step one, just to label my steps. Step two. And I'll talk about how these are graded in a second. 
Um, and so when we integrate, we're going to get y squared over 2 equals uh, negative x squared uh, plus c. Okay, that's it. Um, step 3, we're going to solve for c. So uh, my y, again, my y is 4, my x is 3, so I'm going to plug those in. So we're going to get uh, 4 squared over 2 equals negative 3 squared plus c. So that's 8 equals negative uh, 9 plus c. Okay, move this down a little bit. So I'm just going to add 9 both sides. So uh, 17 equals c. Okay. Then I'm going to go back to that original equation and I'm going to plug it back in. So it's going to be, I'll do it like, I'll do it over here. Um, it's going to be uh, y squared over 2 equals negative x squared plus 17. Uh, we're going to multiply both sides by 2. So remember, I think a little algebra mistake that you could easily make is like, remember, the whole thing gets multiplied by 2. Right? It's not just not just the 17, the whole thing gets multiplied by 2. So it's cancel, and so I have y squared equals um, uh, to do negative 2x squared plus 34. And then the last step here, again, to get rid of that square, we're going to square root both sides. And here we are going to have to choose. So at this point, you would say plus or minus, but there can only be one. Right, there can only be one. So I'll talk about how we know which one it is. Um, so because when we plugged in a 3, we got a 4, there's no way, and I'll, there's, and I'll let me write it out first, uh, negative 2x squared plus 34. Uh, there's no way um, that a square root can be negative. Like a square root itself cannot be negative. So this must be a positive number. So if this is positive, it must, and I know that my answer is positive, then of my options between the plus or the minus, it would have to be the plus. Does that make sense? So if, this is my answer. If this outcome was negative, and you got like f of 3 is negative 4, then this would be negative right here. Okay. But because it's positive outcome, this must be the positive version of the plus minus. And again, this is only relevant when it's a squared term and you're square rooting both sides. It's not when it's the third root. It's the it's only the second root. So that should get you started. <coughs> um, let me scroll down here. So now, yeah, go to delta, go do 6.4, go do the level one ones, okay? Uh, 